Hey everyone, Morgan and husband here. So a lot of you have been asking about solar and have generally been asking about like how to calculate solar for your specific needs, especially for like emergency and disaster purposes. And more specifically to just run maybe just a fridge or just a freezer or something like that, you know? So um, I wanted to have husband explain a little bit um, how to calculate your needs for maybe running a fridge for like four hours at a time, you know, four on, four off or something like that, or running a freezer four on, four off, something like that. Okay. So we have to, um, we have to understand, you know, some basic calculations and husband's going to go into that and then talk about, you know, some solar needs along with, you know, kind of what you want, what you would want to power during the day, night, whatever. Okay. So I'll. So the first step when trying to figure out your emergency solar power is figure out what exactly you want to power. Um, most every device has its power requirements on it somewhere. They're usually by the plug. Uh, if it's a refrigerator or a freezer, you open it up and it's usually on the inside of it. But you know it's in there you can also look it up uh online you can you can look up specific model numbers you can talk to the manufacturer there's various ways to figure out how much power a device needs that's the very first thing that you want to do so let's say you want to run a freezer well most most new freezers nowadays are about 575 watts that's that's a roughly what they are different brand freezers they all vary so so check out the one that you have specifically look for that wattage rating sometimes they'll tell you um, how many amps they need or uh, it's either amps or watts it'll say one of those two if not both um, once you have that information then you can start planning out how much battery power you need to power that a typical freezer may be 575 watts at 115 volts household power now, the batteries that you're going to find at like Walmart or, uh, you know, batteries and solar setups, they're uh, usually like 12 volt batteries, 24 volt, 48 volt. Um, let's just talk about the ones at Walmart. They're 12 volts. If you go get the marine deep cycle ones, they're 12 volts, 100 amp hour batteries. So now you got to kind of do a little bit of math here. So your freezer is 575 watts. You want to run that from a 12 volt battery. So you have to take that 575 and divide that by 12 volts. And that's going to tell you how many amps you need. For that 575 watt freezer at 12 volts, it's about 47 amps. Somewhere right around there. So now you're looking at the Walmart battery. It's 100 amp hours. So you've just calculated that it's going to take you 47 amps to run your freezer. That's 47 amps per hour. So now you take your battery as 100 amp hours, you divide that 100 amp hours by the 47, and that gives you two. So that's telling you that that battery can run your freezer for two hours. Now, one last caveat I'm gonna tell you about the battery is, if you're going to Walmart and just buying one, you know, one of their marine regular lead acid batteries, lead acid batteries cannot be discharged all the way. If you do that, the battery is going to be ruined. Um, the general rule of thumb is to only discharge it to about 50%. So your 100 amp hour lead acid battery is really only good for 50 amp hours. So keep that in mind when you're calculating how much battery power you need. So you would really only be able to use that battery for one hour before considering it dead and wanting to make sure that you fully charge it again. So now that you've figured it out, you can use that battery to run your freezer for one hour. You need to kind of figure out how long do you want to use it? How long do you want it to run? If you want it to run four hours, well, you're going to need four times the capacity. So it's pretty simple. You'll need four of those batteries. You can connect all of those batteries in parallel, which means connect all the positives, connect all the negatives. And now you're going to have 12 volts and you're going to have 400 amp hours because you've, you've taken four of them, one, two, three, four, all of them added up together, 100 amp hours, 100, 100, 100, gives you 400 amp hours. So keep in mind again that, that with, these batter, with these batteries that we're talking about, you only have those four hours before they're depleted down to 50% and they need to be recharged. 
So let's say you want to run your freezer all night long. Well, night's more than four hours. You're only going to get four hours out of it. You're going to have to add more batteries. So let's just say that you want to run your freezer for four hours. You've got your four batteries here. How much solar power do you need? Well, we've already figured out that those four batteries are 400 amp hours. So, uh, uh, a kind of fast and loose calculation that somebody told me a while back that's, that's worked pretty well for us. We still do the math, but this real fast, quick, easy way to kind of think about it is double the amp hours in watts for your solar power. So if you've got these four batteries and they're 400 amp hours, you're probably going to need 800 watts to keep those batteries ch charged. So I'm talking about the 12 volt solar panels and the 12 volt systems. Um, that's what a lot of the, you know, smaller, smaller emergency solar panels are and uh, those systems out there. Um, you could jump up to bigger solar panels, um, sort of like the, you know, the household uh, solar panels that you see on house roofs. Those tend to be higher voltages. Um, which just change the figures completely. It changes the battery requirements. So now you're probably thinking, you, say, you, you, you know how much power your freezer needs. You have four 12 volt batteries. They're all connected in parallel, all the positives together, all the negatives together. How, and you've got your 800 watts of solar panels that are uh, charging these batteries. How do you connect your freezer into it? Well, you need an inverter. So the inverter takes the 12 volt power from your batteries and turns it into the 115 volts or 120 volt household power that you need to power your freezer. Um, it's, a, it's a simple device that just converts the power to make it good for your, your appliances. So depending on the type of inverter you buy, uh, the, there's a lot of them out there that have plugs directly on them where you can just plug devices straight into them. So on the back of the inverter, you would connect it to your batteries, one, one side uh, positive to the positive terminal, negative to the negative terminal, turn it on, and then you, plug, you can just plug your freezer straight into that and it's going to work. Other uh, inverters out there are a little more complicated. They actually need wiring. So you need to wire wire the inverter to your batteries and then wire that inverter to outlets or uh, you know a breaker box, things like that. It's sort of like our setup that we have here. Our inverter is connected to the batteries. And we actually had to have that, you know, we wired that into a breaker box that then goes to outlets wherever we needed them. So something else that I didn't mention is uh, a solar controller, like a solar charger. Um, some, some solar panels need a solar charger to charge your batteries. Other panels do not. And it depends on the exact solar panels that you have. If your solar panels output exactly 12 volts, they can go straight to the battery to charge them. But you should also try to be careful about overcharging your batteries. If your solar panels are just constantly putting battery or power into the batteries and the batteries are full, then overcharging them could damage them. So it might be a good idea to also look at a solar controller, which is just a device that goes in between the panels and your batteries to charge the batteries. So basically you would connect your solar panels to the solar charger. And a lot of them will tell you, you know, this is the input, this is the output. So you would connect your panels to the solar controller and then the solar controller would have a slot to connect your batteries and then it would do the charging of the batteries. So whenever the batteries were full, the solar controller is gonna stop charging them. It's gonna say, hey, they're, they're full, we don't need any more power. And then that's it. Woo, are you ready to get into solar? <laughs> it's a little complicated and it sounds really intimidating. You know, when he's trying, when at first, when he's explaining this stuff to me, I, my eyes literally just glaze over. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, you just, just do it, okay? Just <laughs> stop talking to me about it. You know, it's definitely not for everybody. And, uh, you know, if, if you would feel more comfortable, you know, hiring somebody to do this for you, definitely. But I also seriously understand the difference between solar being plugged into the grid and then solar that's like ours, which we are not tied to the grid at all, okay? A lot of systems these days, a lot of people, uh, you know, like, a lot of the programs that you hear out there like, oh, you know, get money back from the power company. Woo, right? That's actually still being tied into the grid. So um, you you don't have the batteries. You don't have those backups. You don't have anything. It's literally just solar that's, that's more beneficial to the electrical company than it 
is to you. <laughs> I mean, really, you may be getting money back, but that's pretty much the only benefit to you. So really seriously look into that and um, make sure that when you, you're talking to somebody about solar, that they're saying that it's actually a whole system, you know, with the batteries and the inverter and the, you know, controller and all that, instead of just being tied into the system and just some panels up on your roof, because that's, that's a thing too. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> if you have any other questions, uh, let us know, you know, also there's another thing you could get a couple solar panels or something, and then actually plug them into like a, a goal zero, um, generator or any type of other, um, solar generators. Um, those are good investments too if that's something you want to um, look into because then you could actually just plug in your devices straight into that solar generator but again you have to charge it during the day yeah solar solar generators are basically just the entire system packaged into one device it's got the battery the inverter and the solar controller yep. and when you if you do want to go shop for for a solar uh, generator like the goal zero or any of those other ones out there they will tell you how much power that they have they'll give you that amp hour rating um, the same way that you would be looking for batteries that's going to tell you hey this guy is you know this this many amp hours or you know this many watts and then if it tells you the wattage you can figure it out you can say i need x number of watts divide that by the power and that's going to tell you how long it's going to last so um you know I'm going to put some of the calculate basic calculations down below in the description. Well, husband's going to tell me and then I'll put them down below in the description uh, to kind of help you out there. But, you know, definitely seriously look into this and really pay attention to those wattages and voltages and, and amperages and all that. And <laughs> I'm sure I did a horrible job at explaining it. So if you've got questions about it, I will. I would love to answer them and, and clarify. He didn't. This was actually the very first time, which I was. All, I actually understood. I was nodding behind the camera. I was like, oh my gosh, I understand. I understand. Like, this was actually the very first time that I that he's like really you know explained it real straightforward straight shooter here and uh you know has made it very clear but it is still a little confusing I understand you know I've been around this from for a year now and so maybe that's why I'm understanding it a little bit better but um you know again yeah like he said if you have any questions or anything um definitely put them down below and husband will most likely be the one answering it <laughs> thank y'all so much for watching Cock around by preparing today. Alternative energy is the way to go for preppers and, uh, you know, find some way to protect it as well. And I'll have uh, more information about that coming up soon. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.